this year was a strange prize in, 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 in the Nobel Prize in Physics was strange. So and I saw this guy is Charles Cao from England and Mr. Fiber Optics. We you know him. This is in young age when he was starting his work in England. He was born in Shanghai, but raised in Hong Kong, and finally came to England at young age and directed that lab. And the other half of the prize was given to, to these two gentlemen from Bell Labs, and I will talk about them later. So this prize was for something that was developed 12 miles from here. OK, so let me, since this was a very technological prize and actually devoted to sort of old technologies, ancient technologies, new technologies, but based on ancient physics, the main idea about the fiber optics, which is the most interesting, perhaps, or one of the most interesting of the, you know, of the prizes, is uh, essentially the, pro the obvious property of light, that when it goes from a medium to another, it bends. Media have different resistance to the passage of light. Light moves slower in some media than in other. That's characterized by a number n, which tells you how much slower light is in that medium than in air, or in, in vacuum in reality, but the air is pretty much the same. And so light bends. This is very well known to everybody. But if you put anything in it, you will immediately see that you can see that it sort of bends. It looks like broken. You can see it here, so it's not a property just of water. Any alcohol, oops, I, I gave up what's happening. Any alcohol will do the same. So this is very well known. This is called the law of refraction. And essentially what he showed is that, that light bends, okay. and if light arrives there, and part goes back to the medium, and part bends. And there is some connection between the angle at which it arrives and the angle it bends. Here, it's going from a soft medium to a hard medium, so it bends inwards. Well, now you see that it's the opposite. Now, light bends out. And if you keep increasing the angle, eventually, you run out of out. And so, light has to reflect completely. That phenomenon is called, you can take it out, internal reflection. Because light gets trapped into a medium. That if you have a medium which is harder, light cannot get out and gets trapped inside. It was so well known that if you turn off the light for a second, uh, here you see a piece of glass, and light coming from this laser gets trapped inside and eventually goes out at the end. The light cannot leave this piece of glass, although glass is transparent, showing that when water, light travels through water, it will follow. Actually, what we have here is simply a laser pointing to this, and if you can look at that, perhaps you will see that light goes there. This is red. The light goes through the water instead of going straight ahead as it does in the absence of, of that. So this sort of thing was very well known. And essentially, that's the basis of a fiber optics, that if you put a hard material, you will trap a light inside. And if eventually you keep it long enough, you can use it to transport uh, light. Okay. What was so great about these two gentlemen, about this gentleman Kao and his collaborator, uh, that uh, actually he was the first one to insist that optics can be used. You see, light is not a very easy material. Light doesn't bend. My voice goes out of the room and bends. Light does not unless you guide it. And in, in, in optics, you lose a lot. He was the first person to claim that if you purify enough the material of fiber optics, you can get not this length, which was the typical length they used in the 20s and the 30s. Like fiber optics were used only for medi medical things, endoscopics, and so on. But you could go around and do long things. You can have long cables. In 1988, in 1970, based on his ideas, they built the first fiber optics where light could travel for a kilometer. And around 1990, we crossed the ocean with the fiber optics. And now it goes all around the world. So the, the second one. The second one was for developing this thing that you have here, the CCD. The CCD is like a little camera. And here you can see how it operates. Very simply, you get little pixels of light in which you re receive the information. And then you read them out one by one, and you digitize them, and they become a stream of digital information. 
So how is that done? And here, as you see, is one of the typical CCD that our lab has that we have at the end of our telescope to record the images. From here, it goes to the computer. How does that happen? Well, essentially, the photoelectric effect is the basis of this. Light arrives to each of these pixels, and it kicks out electrons. This is the famous effect that Hertz discovered in the 1890s, and Einstein explained in the 1920s. And these electrons charge something, and the amount of electricity there is proportional to the light it arrives. That's the way you get your image. That's the technological way. It's something called an MOS, metal oxide semiconductor. In that little well there is where the electrons collect. And then they came up with a very cute way of collecting that, to read that information. The essence was not how to record it, but how to read it, in which the bytes are the little information in the amount of charge in each pixel moves out. Here you have a picture about how, by switching the gates in like a clock, you can move this out at the end of each row. You have something that collects, and then at the end of the next row, and then you transform this into information. The technical details are complicated even more. If you want a color picture, you have to do a little more. It is something amazing that although by 1970, the first cameras were hitting, uh, well, the, the first uh, the experimental proof that cameras of a size big enough to show an image was appearing that already Kodak was experimenting and knowing that 140 or 150 years of chemical mechanisms to obtain photography were coming to an end. Actually, nowadays, all photography is essentially digital. And this is the way you digitize color, by using four pixels of different colors instead of one. So just to finish, let me show you nowadays, we all carry these things, these things that were very expensive 20 years ago. Now we carry in our cell phones. As we speak, I am taking a picture of you. <laughs> With a little click, now I am sending this uh, through the web. And probably 20 seconds from now, my sister in Santiago, Chile, will be saying, what the heck? <laughs> uh, but that's it. So I want to show you that in some sense, although many of us complain when we say the Nobel Prize is being given this time to technology, but actually this was technology that was very powerful to transform all our communication senses. So it's not as crazy as it sounded to all the physicists at the beginning. I came after the end of this talk, or preparing the talk to the conclusion that it was actually quite wise. So thank you.